I love my Maple Leaf fans. Welcome to the Nerdy Watch Sports Guest Maple Leaf pregame conference live on YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. I'm going to take you to the uh, uh, Maple Leaf pregame conference before the game in Chicago tomorrow. Hope you enjoy this. Let's say I'm a biology student working on a research paper for school. As I work, I incorporate research from websites to support. Seriously, you're getting close to a complete game here as a team, or how do you see it moving toward it? What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think there's been a lot of improvement over the last five or so games. Um, you know, obviously, the last two games really, I think we've had really good stretches. Obviously, in Detroit, the last. Uh, I think it was the second half of that second period and the third, obviously, um, did what we did. And then this kind of start throughout the middle of the game through Minnesota did the same thing. But um, I think we are still looking for that full 60. I think we've gotten very close to it. And um, we just got to stay and you know, trust our structure and our um, commit to, commitment to it. And, you know, we will. How has the adjustment back to North America been? A lot easier than going there, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's been some nice days. Obviously, the one day was really crappy here, raining. But, um, you know, it's been nice. I've been sitting out a lot, getting a lot of sunlight, trying to just get used to the time change and everything like that. And um, it's been a lot easier coming here than it was going there, for sure. The lack of sun really did seem to bother you, like the two hours less over there, right? Like, is the sun important to you? I mean, I guess it's important <laughs> to everybody, really. But, like, from uh, an athlete's perspective? Well, I think. I mean, the more sun, I mean... I think anyone would say the more sunlight you get, the probably happier you are. I mean, I think it's a pretty known cause that uh, the darkness sometimes maybe causes depression or something like that. Um, so, you know, it's definitely nice to have sunlight, see it, um, be around it, and, you know, get used to it. Is that a fact? You're a college guy. I don't know. That's true, no? Is that not? I swear, if it's, like, rainy and moody, it's, like, more depressing. The sun's good for you. Yeah, I know, exactly. That's why I'm saying I like the sun. You want to be interviewed? Get over here, then. I <laughs> Talking about the sun. <laughs> My wife's a science person, you know, I'm not. Like Ask her. Hope you like the star, too. Yeah. Uh, Zeus happy to see you? Yeah, of course. Uh, he was thrilled, so it was nice. I had some one-on-one -on -one time with him a couple days ago and um, had a hell of a day with the man, so he's, um, he was pretty thrilled when I got home and he was waiting for me at the airport, so it was nice to see him, obviously. Four under career assists. Like, what stands out about that number when you hear it? Um, I had a lot of great players that I've played with that have um, helped me, obviously, accomplish that. That, uh, that doesn't happen just by yourself. So I've um, been pretty lucky to have some great line mates in this, uh, in this organization, and um, big help to them, big kudos to them for you know, helping me achieve it. You saw a lot of Bedard in that first game against Chicago. Like, what, what stood out in that matchup? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a while ago now, I kind of think of, but obviously just his looseness, his shot, um, just him finding plays and finding late guys through the seams. So um, you know, got to make sure you're trying to double when you can, trying to make sure we're not giving odd man rushes or you know, kind of, uh, you know, risking plays to give them a lot of the looks the other way. That's what they want. So for us, it's going to be making sure that uh, we're trying to be smart with our pucks, um, trying to stay above and make sure we try to slow their speed down. You never want to take penalties, but the slash on Erickson Eck, is it good to stand up for yourself at some, at, at some points there and hit back? I mean, I don't know. It's one of those ones that you're kind of pissed off at yourself for doing. Um, you know, I don't like doing that because it shows anger and stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't think you can ride a guy like a horse. So. I kind of lost my cool. It's something that I don't like doing, like I just said. And but um, sometimes I guess the, flip, the switch kind of flips on you. So um, just very happy our kill got the job done there and did it without me and um, did the job that uh, I took a stupid penalty on. Does the penalty kill feel like it's coming together too? I allow a power play goal over there. So yeah, I mean I think um, it's definitely trending in the right ways. Um, those two power plays we played against have a lot of skill and a lot of firepower on them, both teams. So. Um, I thought we did a very good job of limiting a lot of chances around our net. Um, goalies made big saves when we needed them to, and D-man made some big blocks. Um, forwards had some good sticks and you know, good denying of entries. And um, I think also we were rolling the lines over pretty well on that. So um, 
you know, every color that was out there was pretty fresh. Are you guys, you guys um, as a whole, are you getting closer to a complete game here, do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's the goal. I think. What um, does that look like? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a work in progress. I think that you know, over the course of a year, I don't know how often you're going to hear us or hear the coach talk about how great of an effort that was over 60 minutes. I think that there's always going to be room for improvement, or there's always going to be that um, you know you like you leave wanting more almost always, even when you win and play well. Um, but. Uh, Ultimately, that's the goal, uh, you know, both as a team and as individuals, you want to play your absolute best for the entirety of the game, um, but that's very difficult. So it's always going to be a work in progress, and it's always going to be something that we're striving to do. How's the, uh, t- how's the time adjustment been for you coming back? Uh, it's been easy coming back. I don't think there's been too, uh, too many issues. Is it good to have an afternoon game kind of on the yeah. same time, or how do you approach uh, it? I don't think that's the way we're looking at it. Um, I mean, we're back now. We're not going to you know, talk about the time change or travel or anything like that. We're back here. We're back playing our normal schedule. And, uh, but in general, afternoon games can be fun. We don't get many of them. So um, no, we're looking forward to it. Does uh, playing with Boston, do you practice all the time? Or do you help you prepare a bit for facing a guy like Darts? We're mm-hmm. not comparing the two of them, but there is that similarity of the shot and the release. We saw Darts do it again last night. Can that help at all? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, we have a lot of really good players on our team, so playing against them in practice is... Is, uh, is is always good um, and, and helpful and um, uh, challenging, um, but I think you know specifically what you're talking about the shot and the changing the angle and the release points and stuff like that. Um, you know we have experience with that just practicing against Austin, but uh, obviously Connor, um, you know has it uh, has it going well right now. So it's important that we're aware when he's out there and uh, you know trying to make it tough on him. Tavares had mentioned that his elusiveness and hockey sense stands out to him even more than the shot. Like when you were going up against him, you saw a lot of him in that first mm-hmm. game in October a while ago now, but mm-hmm. what did you notice? Yeah, I mean, I think all of that, um, his shot, his hockey sense, obviously, and um, uh, that just the whole kind of package. I think um, I think he can beat you in, in, in many different ways. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a unique player. Um, so, again... You know, we're going to look to make things hard on him and just be aware when he's on the ice. November's almost over. Who, who's got the best mo on the team through this month? Would you say? Um, you can say yourself. Too. No, I like I like TJ's. I, you know, he tends to do this every year, so he always gets a good look going. He looks weird when it starts, though. I know. Yeah. He looks very different. Yeah. You just been back uh, to North American time and all that. Yeah, I think it's been pretty good. I think it's a little bit easier coming back than maybe going uh, there, but. Um, you know, a couple of days to just kind of get recuperated and a couple of good practice days. So, um, you know, hopefully we're able to hit the ground running tomorrow. Do you feel to you that the, the team game is coming together over the last four or five games? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's always easy to say that when you have the results as well, but um, I definitely think there's certain things that uh, maybe we're lacking earlier on in the season that we've been able to clean up and at least improve in those areas. And, um, you know, we can always be better, but it's never perfect. And as long as you're taking the right steps, um, you know, it's obviously a positive thing. And part of that also is special teams. The penalty kill in particular is pretty good and sweet. Right? Yeah. You yeah. playing with Willie over there on that? Yeah, I mean, it's good. I think, uh, you know, you just got to make sure you're taking care of your own, you know, what we're supposed to be taking care of out there. And, um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of positive things there on the penalty kill. And, um, you know, that was obviously a bit of a weakness for us, uh, a tough stretch of games. And, uh, special teams are just so important, but, uh, you know, there's just so many good teams, so many good players, so, um, you know, those are really key moments in the games, and when you can kind of uh, tilt the ice towards your side, it's, you know, always best. Yeah, Austin, is Connor Dart doing about what you expected he would do in the first month or so here? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously a special player, and, um, you know, I think sometimes it takes time, and uh, obviously he's... Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, found himself in a bit of a, a heater right now. And, um, you know, I think it's when you're seeing the puck go in, it's always, you know, it gives you a lot of confidence. But um, sometimes it takes time and it's an, always an adjustment. And I think it's just a constant back and forth, I guess, with uh, uh, the league and how teams start to adjust to you and then how you start to, you know, kind of figure that out as well. But he's obviously a, a special player and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be able to figure that out. Speaking of Connor, you're about to get Timmons back uh, based on the good season that he had. How mm-hmm. much are you guys looking forward to seeing him get out? Yeah, for sure. It's been good to see him in practice. I think he's had a couple good weeks, um, you know, being out there and kind of getting acclimated. It's tough when you have that time off and 
um, you know, not skating in that team setting and those competitive, uh, those competitive kind of atmospheres. So I think he's looked really good, and I'm sure he's excited to get back in. And you know, as are we to see him. And like you said, he had a really good preseason. And he's put in a lot of work, um, you know, over his time being injured, but also in the summer, uh, he put in a lot of work. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting him back. When you look back at your rookie season compared to what Connor was going through now. Do you feel sort of fortunate that you had so many young players like breaking in at the same time, mm -hmm. Mitch and Willie and Connor Brown and other mm -hmm. guys like that? Yeah, I think we had a nice mix of guys. Um, you know, I think a lot of us really lean on some of the veteran guys, though, and in different circumstances. But uh, it was nice to just kind of, you know, all be going to similar things in our first year and getting to experience all these, uh, you know, new things that the NHL, uh, you know, is. And so, um, you know, that was obviously fun. But I think it was uh, just important for us to have good veterans around. It just kind of shows throw ups. That first game against Chicago, you saw a lot of the Darder line. Uh, we, we know the shot gets a lot of attention, but do you notice anything else uh, when you were in that matchup with him that stood out? Yeah, I think he skates really well, and obviously his IQ he's got uh, you know very very good IQ, and um, you know he's not just a pure goal scorer. I think he makes plays as well. So um, I think he kind of does everything really well, but his shot obviously stands out. But I think uh, there's lots of little things in there that uh, that he does that made me go unnoticed. Movember uh, is winding down. You're kind of the expert. You know, anyone around the room impressed you with the lows they've been able to grow this month? Yeah, a couple of the staff have looked pretty good. Um, a lot of the staff actually, and uh, Morgan Riley gave us a little uh, last week. Uh, you know, last week mustache. So uh, there's been some good ones in here, but I'd have to credit the staff for uh, for their work. They've got some pretty good ones in there. Who's the best of them? Um. I don't know Paul Aoyi looks pretty good. Yeah, he doesn't really sport the facial hair quite often. So when he get when he gets the opportunity, the guys have been giving it to him pretty good. So I think it looks great. Sheldon, you said today would be the better indicator for you in terms of where the team's at coming off the trip. What, what was your sense? Yeah, I thought energy is still good uh, here today. Another uh, good, short but hard practice. Like the pace and tempo where the guys are at, and I think we're excited to get playing games. Are you concerned about uh, Yarkov's availability? Uh, uh, I mean, enough concern that we didn't we didn't skate him today. Here, we we, wanted, we sent him to get some imaging done just to to be sure. Um, obviously, took that took that puck yesterday, and and they didn't love how it was how it was looking and feeling today. So, uh, sent him for imaging, but the news has been positive here so far. So, he'll come with us on the trip and be a game time decision for tomorrow. Sean, so we hear like full sixty a lot, but the team strives for that. Are you getting close to that? I know that's hard to attain. Yeah, I think I think especially on the defensive side of things, you know, I mean we when you say full sixty, I mean you're talking about perfection, which is really really difficult to attain. And um, but I do think our defensive process has been far better, which has give us a chance to really win every game. I thought early in the season a lot of times we were beating ourselves with some of the mistakes we were making. Uh, I feel like that has improved dramatically, um, and we're in a good place there. We're going to need that to continue, obviously. Um, yeah, but in terms of the overall game and carrying play uh, and having you know, good uh, segments of each period over the course of 60 minutes, I don't think we've done that yet. You know? And you know, I think we had really good moments, enough good moments to, to be in games and give ourselves a chance to win. But uh, I don't feel like we've, you know, we, we've had... Uh, good segments of, you know, all three periods in a game. I think we've recovered well and all those sorts of things. But uh, the defensive play has improved significantly, which is why we've been getting the points we have. Connor Timmins is available for you tomorrow? Uh, he's preparing to play. We'll, we'll use every second we have before making that final decision on him. But uh, it's been a good couple of weeks here for him now. And... That's uh, that's what we're anticipating, but we won't make that decision until tomorrow. How big the look of your D change when he comes in the lineup? <clears throat> well, I think there's, in terms of what we think he can provide with the puck moving and getting the puck to the net, um, similar to what Klingberg, you know, his strengths are. Uh, Timmons would help us on the power play as well. Uh, so I think um, having more mobility and uh, puck movement and some offensive contributions uh, can help us for sure, um, you know, so it changes the look of it, you know, Legas and Benoit have done a really good job for us uh, in some defensive roles and, and given us really good minutes helping our penalty kill and stabilizing that for us. Uh, Timmins is a different look and the other part of it is getting a right shot in there, which um, I think is, is important in terms of moving the puck and, 
uh, being a little more fluid with us, with ourselves offensively in all three zones, uh, having that right shot will help there too. Pitch was, uh, was upset with himself for the penalty he took, slashing on Eric's neck, but do you see any value in him standing up for himself in that situation similar to how Nylander did it with the roughly penalty last year, or is that just a bad, can't do it? Uh, I mean, you don't like that one, and you don't love that one because it's so obvious and apparent, but you do love guys competing and holding their ground and standing up for themselves. So sometimes you got to take those and you got to kill them, which is exactly what we did. Uh, so, yeah, you want to try to find a way that you can do it without maybe the officials noticing. Um, but, like, you know, sometimes you do got to kind of hold your ground and all that kind of stuff and stay in the fight. And, and uh, you know, in, in that case, I liked it, especially that we got the kill. Back to Sammy tomorrow and then Joseph? Yes, that's the plan. You mentioned yesterday Klingberg's status hasn't changed. Just to clarify, what is his status like day to day, week to week? Like, what yeah. is it? His status is that he's working through things to determine what, what's going to be the next steps for him. What's been your sense of Reeves as he's kind of waited for his next chance? Yeah, he's just been able to try to maximize the days that we've had. Obviously, we haven't played a lot of games, so he hasn't missed a ton of game action. You know, when you look at look at it relative to the to the period of time it's been since he's last played. So it's just about maximizing the practice reps, and he's had a couple of good days of practice here. Um, you know, and, and he's a, he's a part of our team. He's an important part of our team. He's a he's a presence uh, around our room, and he's continued to keep a, a good attitude, which which we've loved. And he's a professional all the way through. Uh, he recognizes that the team's responded well here in the last little bit. Um, you know, but we, we still recognize that he's a, a a piece of our team that we've we've got to make sure we're continuing to maximize every day that he gets to keep him ready. I hope you enjoy the uh, Maple Leafs press conference. You're going to head to Chicago. Go take on the Chicago Blackhawks tomorrow afternoon. I'll be back tomorrow evening. Look at update. And then the Raptors play tomorrow night also. And I'll be back at midnight for the Raptors highlight. I have the Maple Leafs highlight a little earlier than expected. All right, so stay tuned for that. This is Johnny Watch reporting for Johnny Watch Sports Guest Maple Leafs edition. I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bye for now.